the scene in March 2008 when the Golden Gate and Redwood chapters of ASHRAE got together for dinner and continuing education. The topic? What do we mean by carbon neutral? Here are some excerpts from the presentation. But the gist of it is, is that this is buildings here. This is industrial, this is, is transportation. The carbon footprint of buildings is the largest component to the carbon footprint of, of the United States. And, I, and, I, and almost all of that uh, comes from coal that's used to generate electricity. I think, you know, we don't have much of that on the West Coast. We don't, uh, it's not because we're somehow more noble people that we have cleaner electricity. It's because we don't have coal. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of people that, you know, we're from California, we're, we're leading the charge, low carbon. Frankly, it's a whole lot easier to, to design a carbon neutral building if you're in a mild climate with a marine influence and your power comes from hydro and natural gas. If, if by whatever circumstance you happen to grow up in Wyoming, it's easy to pick on them, but they have coal, we don't. And so they use it. Lucky, we live in California. Um, we are good people, but we aren't necessarily more noble. Um, we just happen not to have coal. In Southern California, if you use a thousand kilowatt hours, a megawatt hour of, of, of electricity, it has a carbon footprint of something like 800 pounds of CO2. Okay? What does that mean? If you happen to live in Ohio, not only are the winters slightly colder than what we get in, say, Santa Barbara, uh, but the carbon footprint of the electricity you use is, you know, kind of two and a half times greater. So it's much, much more difficult to design and operate a carbon neutral building in Ohio than it is in, in California. Uh, Arizona's kind of somewhere in between. And, uh, you know, Nevada's back up at the high end. But if you get the footprint of a building wrong, it's very, very difficult to achieve carbon neutrality. Mostly because everybody wants to throw it over the fence to the mechanical, make this efficient building, uh, but, but most of the energy isn't mechanical. I mean, maybe on the peak day it is, but an awful lot of it's lighting. A huge percentage is plug loads, which everybody ignores. If you're going to make a carbon neutral building, somehow you need efficient computers. Um, you need efficient elevators. You need efficient everything. Okay, so I, I just, I really don't understand. How can, how can, I understand you can't buy yourself into renewables. Google could only fit about 10% of their load on their roof. They're not going to get there, but a lot of buildings can. So, you know, with, with net metering and using the grid as your battery, how, you're still not explaining it. Just please explain, why does that not get you to carbon neutrality? There's, there's two issues. One is you could get to net zero. Let's assume you have a very efficient house and you power, you generate as much electricity on an annual basis as you consume. And so you're at zero net energy, which is, which is essentially what, what California is mandating by 2020 for uh, residential new construction. Net zero may not be carbon neutral if the power that you consume is, is coal-based. You could be net zero on an annual basis, but if what you take from the grid comes from coal, for example, um, there, there's still carbon in your uh, electricity. Use. But I, let, me, let me rephrase that. Does, a good design is still the cheapest way to do any of this. Hopefully, if you design buildings that have you know, an energy footprint that's say, a third to a half of what a typical building is now, then we're arguing about a lot smaller piece of the pie, and it will be cheaper. I mean, putting CO2 into salt domes or the various other strategies for sequestering carbon is, is interesting from an engineering perspective, and I assume it will be quite expensive. 